Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our webinar today, uh, focusing on Creo machining. My name is Rob Romanowski. I'm the Director of Sales Operations with 3HTI. And joining me today is Lee Goodwin, Principal Application Engineer from PTC. And uh, Lee has been with PTC for 26 years. And uh, we were just having a conversation about how CAD used to be when he first started using it back in the 80s uh, with these cumbersome 50-pound monitors and CAD cost uh, $25,000 and didn't include sheet metal. So uh, I think the good old days of CAD are here, um, especially with the, uh, the decrease in the pricing, but also with the increase in the capabilities and what you're able to do from a, from a laptop. So without further ado, I'm going to pass Lee control. Lee's going to give us a review of Creo, uh, Creo Complete Machining and give us a demonstration as well. If you have any questions, be sure to type those into the dashboard, and we will answer those as we – we'll try to answer them as we go along, but we'll have a Q&A session at the end. And we're looking at about 35, 40 minutes today. So, Lee, you have control, and take it away. All right. Let's see if I can get my share going. That I can see your screen. Okay, you see my PowerPoint? Good. I do. All right. Well, welcome everybody. Uh, thanks, Rob. So again, my name's Lee Goodman. I'm out of the Colorado office, uh, PTC. And yeah, let's talk Creo NC. So I'm gonna go through a PowerPoint, talk some of the highlights, uh, some of the differentiation we make among the CAM world, and then give you a quick demonstration. Uh, show you what it looks like. Um, I'm going to just focus kind of on a milling and automation and so forth, and then we'll run by some, you know, mill turn stuff, and um, also should mention the mold, because that's quite often tool design is also a precursor to this work. So we'll do all that. I uh, think we'll probably have time at the end for questions, so uh, let's hopefully, hopefully this will be useful for you. Let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so let's talk about some of the challenges. If you guys are doing NC program, none of this is new to you. Uh, customers always want the highest quality at the lowest cost. Nothing changed there, but NC program, it takes time to get it right. Uh, it can be a very finicky thing. It would be a challenging thing, but it's so crucial to getting the right parts out. Now, there are literally hundreds of CAM systems available. You go to like Modern Machine Shop, look at suppliers. I just can't believe some of the names I run into. Uh, but there's lots out there. So how do you choose? Uh, well, how do you make a distinction there? Well, a couple of things to look at, and hopefully that's what I'm going to show you here today. You know, is it fast? Is it reliable to use? And then our biggie, this is kind of where we've made our name, is does it require the CAD model to be translated? Does it have to go through an intermediate step or, even worse, recreate the model? Uh, there's all sorts of places for error this area. If our manufacturing guys are rebuilding it, they're going to make typos. You know, it's just human nature and so forth. So that's always an issue. How do you get the CAD model in? And then also, what happens when it changes? Uh, most of the customers out there, yeah, as soon as you get that thing programmed, they're going to call and say, oh, wait, can we – change this, move this groove, make this a little wider, a little deeper, and so forth. How does your CAM system respond to that? And then when you're doing a lot, when you got maybe a lot of different things going on, are you sure you're machining the correct version? That's a really important thing, because if you spend a lot of time making parts that are the wrong parts, that can get really, really expensive, and we don't want to do that. So let's talk about Creo NC. Uh, Creo NC is sort of just the family name of our suite of CAM products that provide you milling, turning, and so forth. So what is it? I'm assuming most of you have probably not seen it before, uh, but it's a purpose-built Creo application. It's, uh, it's built into Creo, and it's been around a while. It actually started about the same time I did uh, with PTC. Um, back in 94, this was version uh, version 13 back then, was our first real, you know, putting out a production-ready CAM system. So it's been around a long time, but it's been updated. So when you'll see here in my little demonstration, you know, it's the Creo user interface. I'll be showing you the latest version, uh, Creo 7.0. It came out this year. Um, but a lot of what we've been doing lately is 
make it easier to use, easier to learn, easier to understand. All right, so how does it work? Well, part of it is just what we talked about before. You machine directly on the part model. If you have a Creo part model, then you simply assemble it, just as if you're making any other sort of assemble. And you put it in a fixture, put it in a workpiece, whatever you want to do, and then all of your tool paths occur right there. There's no translation, there's no recreation of data, uh, and what that does, it opens up so much productivity uh, because you know when that part gets modified, your tool paths can update. So if you've got an OD, you know, turning operation, that OD is right. Uh, you didn't have to rebuild it. You know it's the latest if you're working on the latest model, and your tool path is going to update when that OD changes. All right, so what do we have? Obviously, we've got to be able to support your machines if it's going to be useful. Um, so start with milling, uh, full three axis, roughing, finishing, drilling, engraving, got some oddballs like plunge milling and so forth, all of that built into the system. We start with three axis. Even our base package can do three plus two axis. And after the demonstration, I'll, I'll make a quick mention of the modules, the names, the extensions. So if you want to talk to our good buddies there at 3HDI, what might fit for you, I'll give you some of that names here in a second. But 3 plus 2 axis, so rotational, uh, tombstone work, anything like that we can support. And we also have true 4 and 5 axis, so uh, making turbine blades or anything that requires complex move, we can do that. Most all of our uh, complex tool paths, all the surfacing and so forth, you can say I want to do 4 axis, I want to do 5 axis. Uh, again, some more recent changes, you know, we've always had a lot of traditional machining strategies. A lot of what we've added lately is more high-speed strategies, constant tool load, you know, with a, maybe a shallow cut and a very fast feed rate. Those require a lot of little details. It's sort of, we don't have a separate module just for that because it's all the little details that make that up. Uh, but we've been adding a lot of that in the last few years. We have turning, so normal two-axis, roughing, finishing, drilling, profiling, groove turning, and so forth. You can also add four-axis, so whether it's separate or synchronized turning or, or pinch turning for simultaneous, we can do that within our module. You also have capability for mill turn, so have up to twin spindle, two spindles, up to four turrets, all working on a mill turn center, so with turning, uh, and go ahead and do that right inside of it. And again, we've had this capability, the mill turn capability, for many, many years. It's something we're pretty good at. So do that milling on your lathe, get parts out really, really fast. All right, some of the other uh, capabilities we need to talk about, one is, of course, automation. And for us, automation is something you do it, if you like it, make it a template. And it's that fast. Literally, I can just highlight write in my model tree a bunch of tool paths and say, create a template. And now, now I have my template for this is how I do this one tool path or these 50 tool paths and so forth. You can store those, you can have as many different versions and so forth, no real limitations there. But automation is just one of the easiest thing we do. There's no scripting or programming language. You just say, nope, I like this with this tool and this strategy, save it and then reuse it over and over. And I'll show you that here in a quick little demo. We have simulation, so you can go ahead and simulate your tool path. You have different, a couple of different ways you can do it. You can do it right inside of Creo NC. You know, move the tool around, show the tool path, uh, make sure that's looking like what you're wanting to see. You can see the CL file as it goes there. You also can do solid modeling simulations. So this is basically a, just one more button, but now show me the scallop, show me the step over, um, show me the fact that I just ran into my fixture. I'd really rather know that before I get out on the shop floor. Um, so we can do all that. And again, all of these are built into Creo NC. All right, same thing for post-processing. So every seat of Creo NC includes G-Post, allows you to create, modify post, and that's one of those uh, things you can do it yourself. You could start from a template, a library post. If you have a, a three-axis modern mill, you can write a post in a matter of minutes. 
If you've got a nine axis mill turn center with all sorts of fancy devices and so forth, G Post can write that post. If you're wanting to start with that, that's where you get your buddies like 3HDI to come in as an implementation, you know, do some setup, do some training, and go ahead and write those post processors as part of that. Um, so it's really, it's up to you. You have this G-Post software on your box and then use consultants for really complex or if you got a bunch and you want a bit, go to training. There's a week-long class. You can be a G-Post guru if that fits your environment. All right, so that's all included. And then I've talked a lot and that's what my demo will be is bringing in Creo parametric data. Uh, but the truth is most all of this works with anything else. You know, step file, I just native files, parasolid files, whatever. Bring those in. I'm going to be able to put tool paths to them. I may lose some of the automation capability of auto recognizing everything if it's just a blob, but I can still tool path it. I can still use my templates uh, to machine it the way I want to. Uh, no real loss of information there. So even if you just had a DXF drawing, that's enough for me to make a tool path of. So we haven't lost sight of the fact that not everybody's 100% Creo. Uh, we'd like to fix that. We'd be happy to do that, but it's not the real world. So, so I'm going to show you machining on Creo parametric, but don't lose track of we can handle pretty much anything. And then really crucial, if you got a lot of files, you're getting into a lot of customers, a lot of different environments. Uh, Windshield PDM is the PTC data management system for Creo from a design world. The key here is you also have the option of letting Windchill control the manufacturing files. And that's kind of nice, uh, talking about making sure you have the latest version or wanting to go find an older version, or we programmed this part two years ago. I wonder where the CAM files are for it. Well, Windchill can tell you, do a where used on that design part. And it'll say, yep, let's go over there. Uh, and call up that manufacturing model, update it, do whatever you need to. So all of this can be controlled by Windshield PDM. Doesn't have to, you can still store them locally and so forth, but you have that option, you have that ability. All right, let's go take a look. So today I'm making motors. And so the idea here is I've got these blade parts in here, these kind of fan things, and I need to go machine those. So how does it work? Well, the idea is simply file new, but instead of part or assembly or drawing or sketch, you say manufacturing. And so I've got one set up here. Let me move over to that screen right here. So this is a Creo manufacturing assembly. Those of you that are familiar with assemblies and so forth in Creo in general, it's a .asm. But because I'm in the manufacturing environment, you'll see I get a bunch of tabs of work pieces, tools, and so forth. And so this is my environment now to bring in parts and cut them right inside of Creo. And when I hit save, it's the same save button, it's the same regenerate button that you have in regular Creo. So uh, I've got this one set up. I've got my machine defined. This is where I tell it I'm on a mill. I'll lay the mill turn to three, four, five axis. You know, does it have probing? Does it have various things? In this case, I have a predefined turret. So I have a bunch of tools set up, and that's strictly up to you as far as how you want that to work. Uh, in this case, I have some predefined, but then I can always add more as I go. Um, you'll see I have solid tools. Flatted mills, bullnose cutters, these are just from a library that we have that you can download and customize, whatever. You know, here's some drills and center drills and so forth. But you can define tools as solid models. You can define tools as just parameters. If you need, well, let's say I need a lollipop cutter with a two inch ball and a three quarter inch shank. Well, that's a tool. You just say apply, that's in my turret it's ready to be used. So all of those are up to you. Plus, you also can get tool models from, you know, Kinemetal and Sandvik and so forth. I just download solid tools, you know, the CAD models and a little bit of setup, put them inside of Creo NC and you can really use them. And that's really useful, especially over in the turning world. 
where you really need the exact geometry, the back of the tool geometry to worry about it, ID tools, stuff like that. So you got your tool set up, got your work cell set up, got, in this case, I brought in a fixture, same thing. This is just a generic no-name chuck that brought in from our library, but you can model anything you want as a fixture, and the system knows that it's a fixture. And then start machining. Well, first we got to tell them what are we going to make. And here's where I go get that model. So this is the same thing. The idea is I say that Creo CAD model, I want to bring that one in. And then I use normal Creo assembly techniques. I'll say I want to put this face up against there. Let's go the other way. Something like that. Drag it up and down. Just use normal Creo assembly to do that. And then what are we going to make it out of? So I can, I could assemble another part if I had a casting, a forging model, something like that. Or in this case, nope, we're just going to make it out of billet. I'll say, build me a workpiece. And it says, okay, do you want rectangular? No. How about round? There you go. And I need to add a little material. You'll see it kind of knows the minimum, but I can go in and say, yep, I need to add some material there up the top, or, you know, just simply give it a, a firm value and so forth, whatever works. But this is your setup. Now you've got workpiece, you got your design part, you got fixture. We're ready to make tool paths. All right? And part like this, probably start with I gotta rough the whole thing or face it out and so forth. So I'm gonna start with what we call mill windows. And mill windows are simply boundaries. It just says, okay, start machining here at the top and give me a boundary of this workpiece. I want you to go down, let's do the facing thing first. So I'll say, yeah, zoom down to maybe that depth there and go ahead and go outside and give it a name. And this naming convention is really important. I'll show you here in a minute for standardization, your automation. But that's all I really need to make a tool path. I'll just say, all right, face milling. And let's use maybe that five eighths something and go ahead and let's define a retract and maybe three inches up and so forth here's all my feeds and speeds and the idea I'll show you a lot of different ways to set these things up um, but the idea is you start with that and now you have a tool path so you can play it you know show me what it looks like show me the motion show me the way it's acting the step depths and so forth and then you improve it. You go in and say, okay, now I'll, let me show you the big list here. You know, I want to set a different arc feed, retract feed. We could spend weeks going through all these different options, you know, over travel, offsets, and so forth, all of this for face. Um, let's see, actually, we want to lace this with an arc. And you'll see so a lot of these have graphics kind of showing you what each type of motion mean uh, and so forth. So you set it up the way you like, you got a tool path you like, you play it and say, yeah, that looks like what we do. So you say, okay. So now automation, the idea is you do parts like this all the time. So let's go ahead and name this thing. Let's call it the uh, 650 face, you know, for uh, aluminum, oops, if I could spell. 6061, whatever. And that's the idea is you name it anything that means something to you. Because now what you're going to do is you just simply highlight it and say, build me a template. And then whatever name and so forth. So the idea is now I get a new job and it has a very similar sort of setup. Well, I'll just go in, build that mill window. And then instead of saying face mail, pick this tool and so forth, I just say, nah, go to my templates, template library, and let's go grab that one. And it brings it in, it puts in the tool, the fees, the speed, all of that different thing, and gets you going. And the idea is it can be one tool path, it can also be a whole bunch. Let me go ahead and delete that one. And let's make another mill window that starts at where the other one left off, right there. And oops. Let's make that, and I want to go outside 
And this one, let's set the depth to maybe that flat right there. So now I'm saying kind of rough out everything in the middle there. And the real key again, give it a name because those templates are gonna look for these names. And that's the real key. You're not storing any geometry with a machining template, you're storing strategies. And so that means now I could go get a template that is maybe everything that I do for fan blades or all of the roughing or all the semi-finish and so forth. I just say, go get these templates. And now I've got tool paths, right? And that's the idea. That's where you really start speeding things up. You just say, yep, go get my standard roughing, finishing, semi-finish. You know, maybe there's still a little bit of cleanup here and there, and that's normal. But the idea is just that fast, I went and made up one, two, three, four, five tool paths because I've done it before and I can do it again. So that's the basics of Creo NC. Now, once you've got it to that level, that's where we then go to G Post. So let me pop this up real fast, talk about that. So here's my, yeah, yeah. Hey, while, while you're pulling that up, so we did have a question come in when you were uh, going through the tool library. The okay, question cool. question is, the questions are, um, multi-layer questions, does the tool library allow for machine-specific tools, meaning if they're uh, using two machines, can a tool have a library, uh, have a global library number and a machine pocket number? Um, yes. So when you bring in, I can even back up there, um, when you bring in tools, so you specifically say this tool for this job is sitting in pocket one, pocket 30, whatever. Um, and so that way, yeah, same tool, but it'd be in different places on different jobs. I would just say, okay, now for this job, go get, you know, some other tool. Here I'm going to my library and I want to go get my... Uh, keyway cutter and I want to get the one and a quarter one and that tool is going to be in this job is going to be in turret 33 so boom or turret station I'll say move that so now I've applied that standard and so forth so assuming it's they're the same tools same name you just simply yeah when you apply it yeah it's in different places all as part of in this case I said this is where it is for my DMG and VX 5100 do another job Yep, you could even have the same turret, but then reshuffle the numbers uh, for that. So, yep, not a problem. Cool. Thanks, Lee. Okay. All right. Uh, let's all right real quick. Let's go back to that post. And again, this is one of those we could also spend hours, and we don't want to do that. But the idea of G post is real simple. You just say, I want a mill. It's going to be number twenty-four. And again, you could like start with defaults and we just have very simple defaults for Haas, Fidals, Mitsubishi, Bridgeports, a lot of old ones there too. I'll just say, yeah, it's a Haas, so let's use that. And so now I've written a new post for a three axis machine. Now I'll go in and say, nope, it has a four axis rotary table and then it's a B table and things like that. So here's GPOS. You just walk through this questionnaire, what sort of format, how do you want the sequence numbers to go, you know, what sort of motion linear, and then how do you do circular statements? You know, how do you output various pieces? So this is something most anybody can program will walk through, but then there's a complete macro uh, programming language here that says if thens and do loops and parameters. So if you add in say a, a bar feeder, you know, it's not a standard piece of a three axis or maybe a two axis lay, but you put in here, what commands do you want to have come in for bar feed? What's going to happen? What parameters should it grab? And then what sort of image code file should come out from that? So that's all you have to do. And again, it can be very simple. It can be very, very complex depending on your requirements and your machines, but either way you got G post to work with it. So, and that just comes with every seat of Creo NC. And then when you're done, the idea is, okay, I got this thing programmed. Obviously, I got a little bit more work to go. I would play it, you know, make sure I like it here. So, yeah, that looks good. I would simulate it. Say, so, okay, show me this in the solid machining. 
Okay, so the idea is here. Let's go ahead and turn on the stock part. Let's, let me turn off the tool path, but go. So now I'll see the step over, the step dev, you know, again, the scallops. Um, I can have settings, you know, how close can I get to my fixture before it sends up a flag? I can do, you know, stop at a collision, stop at gouge, all sorts of different things there. I uh, can do, you know, cross sections, uh, measurements, how thick is the material as it remains here. All of this is included, uh, simulation. It's running off of the CL file. So if you have a requirement to run off of uh, posted data, MNG code file, we support uh, several different third parties that can do that. But this is all just included right within Creo NC. Okay, and so that's kind of where you start, but then all those other scenarios I talked about, like what about somebody calls and says, hey, you haven't cut that part yet, have you? And they're the designer, so their job is so easy. They just go in and say, yeah, I need to change the height of these blades or things like that. You know, so they just go in and say, yep, I want to make a, a short stubby one. You know, so this is now 1.1 or something like that. So they make changes to the design model and so forth, and then maybe change the, let's change the pattern maybe. So instead of 12, you know, we're only going to have nine blades and so forth. So they change everything in the design world. And so now I've got a real different model here. What happens to that cam system? Well, that's the idea is now, let me pop over to that one again. And do, 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 that guy. Notice what's happened. It already knows that blade is shorter. It knows that there's only nine blades. And all I have to do is hit that regenerate button. And so now it's recalculated those tool paths. So for example, here's the, you know, the roughing sequence. It already knows this thing has nine. Let's go do that. That's where you really start saving time, saving money, uh, getting a lot of parts out. You start with that. We're so good at keeping up with changing these things. And then I just put out a new tape. The other scenario, of course, is though, what about the design part itself? And this is lots of people have table uh, drawings, you know, the old table drawings and so forth. We now call them in the CAD world family tables. So here you can see I got a lot of versions of this part with different ODs, IDs, number of blades, you know, blade height, all these things can change. Here in the design world, I just make up a spreadsheet and give them all different names. But what that can happen then is in the machining world, if I've programmed one of them, then all I really have to do now is once I'm happy with that, I'll go in and say, let's replace that model. So you see it has access to all of those Creo things. You know, I want, oh, let's go 11, 19, 10. I don't even know, I think that's a bigger one. So then I just say, okay. It goes in and changes that part. It's a bigger OD, you know, it's got a different number of blades. So what do I have to do? Well, I just simply, let's go change my workpiece. Let's make it a bigger size, smaller size. You know, maybe we don't need it as tall, but we need a bigger OD. So now all of my tool paths have updated there. So that means any of those family table members, I can go in and just say, yeah, swap it out. Let's put that other one. You know, the only thing that could be is maybe this particular version has, you know, some drilled holes on the outside that weren't in the original. Well, then I just go to milling and I go to my hole making. Or maybe the other way around. Maybe the master model does have holes and then has some chamfers out here that may or may not be in those other models. Well, if those aren't there, let's say I drilled some holes, they're no longer there. Well, then I'm going to get a message here on my toolpath. It's going to highlight in red and say, hey. You know, those, these drill cycles aren't doing anything. What do you want to do with them? And I'll say, okay, for now, let's just suppress those guys. Turn them off, turn them on and off. All of that is inside the power of Creo. And that's where you really start having some fun. So that's the basics. You know, the details here, we have milling, roughing, re-roughing, finishing, all sorts of different things for that. Surfacing, several different ways to machine surfaces.
Uh, detail things like trajectory is a very, very low level. Go here, this edge, retract you know, half an inch. All those things are buildable, plus a whole bunch of other stuff. You know, Do corners, do a manual cycles. Just maybe that's kind of like your bar feed cycle. You can set those up yourself. So all sorts of milling functions, all sorts of drilling, pecking, boring, reaming, and so forth. If you just do molds, cavities, uh, positive and negatives, we actually have a high-speed milling uh, m module, and I'll talk about the modules here in a second, but those are really kind of geared for people who just do that, so we've got some functions there, and again, I'll hit you on the modules here in a second, but that, you know, we've got tons of milling things there. Um, I called up a couple of other models just to show a few other things, so for example, like here, uh, let me move that. Here's more of a you know a twin spindle mill turn sort of situation. So you define your machine, you know, as okay, it's a mill turn, it's a three, four, five axis, it's got two heads or three heads, four heads, how many spindles, what happens, you know, now I've got essentially two turrets, and can I do milling and turning with both turrets? Yes or no, all these different things for turning. So you set that up and then make some tool paths. And so really kind of the same way for the most part is you set up whatever sort of different strategies, different ways to cut and so forth. Here's an example where I said, yeah, these, these kind of tools are really useful for uh, turning. You know, go ahead and define them as solids, download them from uh, whoever, Kinemetal and so forth. Uh, let's, let me back up like over here. You know, here's more of a groove tool and downloaded from somebody, but those are really useful for turning operations. And you can start with essentially do them all independently and then go ahead and put in synchronization points. You know, let's say I want to uh, do, uh, if I highlight the operation, here's where I can say synchronize and say get a little uh, essentially, all right, this groove can start at the same time as the cutoff, or no, not the cutoff, that'd be bad, uh, the roughing operation and so forth. So that allows you to sync various pieces depending on how they're working. And then once you're in, if you have a mill turn with dual spindles and so forth, let me just go to one of these tool paths. Notice that's one of the things you'll say, is it main spindle, sub spindle, what's the coordinate system, how do you program your particular machine? Got all that. All right, so mill turn, all sorts of functionality there in the turning world to go along with the milling world. And then one last one we should hit on just because sometimes you actually start there, and that's mold. So we have uh, kind of a separate module, tool design option, that gives you this, the ability to bring parts in and build parting lines, parting planes, parting surfaces and put in shrinkage you know you always got to do that almost for most of these process and then split the mold you know split it pull out any sort of sliders or injector pins and so forth so this allows you to really use the horsepower of all of creo to do a tool design function and then when you're done these are individual parts you know the, the basically the cavity the core the cope the drag whatever it is you're building uh, again, for injection mold or casting and so forth, we've got functions for all of that. All right. So let's see. I got 30, just about ready to wrap up. Let me do a couple of quick things here back on the PowerPoint. Uh, again, the modules, the way we sell this, uh, pretty simple. Um, you're getting started with milling. Base package is called Prismatic Multisurface Milling. It's the full uh, three plus two uh, milling world. So, uh, and it's everything you saw me do, high speed milling, surfacing and so forth, simulation, post-processing, again, for full three plus two. And then uh, you can also step up to the middle package, it's called production machining, and basically has everything the bottom package has plus turning, single dual turret. And then the top package we call complete machining, which is everything in the other two packages plus true multi-axis, milling while rotating, and mill turn. So live tooling on a lathe. All of that is included inside of the complete machining. 
I mentioned one of our newer modules, so if you specifically just do cores and cavities, you know, if you're a mold maker, we really have a package just for that. High-speed milling, roughing, re-roughing, finishing, refinishing, uh, all the standard hole making options. That's within the mold machining extension. So those are kind of the four ways we package up all of Creo NC. So, and they all work together. You can buy one, you can add you know, one later, you know, upgrade and so forth. It's really, it's all the same package. That's about it for the, what we have. Again, just going back to the value, it's a complete CAD CAN system with real concurrent design and manufacturing. You know, I can have the part, I can make the mold, I can machine the mold. Part changes, mold changes, you know, NC changes. What's the value of that to you? Hopefully that's something that can really help you up. You know, if you're not having to translate models and losing models and machining the wrong parts, uh, you've got lower IT cost. If you've already got Creo in-house, you've already got everything you need for Creo NC, just a matter of the extensions. So hopefully all of that, get your parts out faster, uh, make them cheaper, uh, make your customers happy is really what that's all about. So that's what I have. Happy customers. Yeah, happy customers are a good thing. So uh, be happy to take Absolutely. some questions. Lee, uh, great job. This is tremendous. I mean, you've, you know, not only have you been doing this for quite a while, but you still clearly have a passion for, uh, for machining and for PTC products. So great job kind of, and thank you. Um, kind of fun stuff, so why not? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I like it. Absolutely. So also on our panel is uh, Jim Gilmore. Jim Jim has about 23 plus years experience uh, with PTC solutions. And I'm gonna let Jim have the floor and, and say a couple things just to, uh, I guess, tie everything up in a bow. Gym. Yeah, um, Lee, great job. Uh, I love it. You know, the, the biggest thing here is the automation. Um, automation, automation, automation. Once you've done one thing once, you'll never have to do it again. And that's a key thing. Um, just speed. Uh, you, you use, you, I think you stole my phrase, better, faster, cheaper, but you said it in different terms. Um, but, you know, I have companies that have automated their design and manufacturing process in-house, but I also have machine shops that take in uh, native files from other CAD CAM packages or SEP files. And Creo doesn't care where you start, okay, especially since they added Unite Technology, where we can open and technically modify. So if you want to pull a part in, let's say you're a mold house, you can pull a part in regardless of the source of the geometry and add draft to it and then split a mold and then machine the mold. So Creo gives you the ability to do all of this and instead of going back to the customer, you may need to collaborate, hey, can I put three degrees of draft on this on this surface? You know, and what, what's your uh, inflection point for the draft? But that's it. So um, it, it really is a design through manufacturing automation technology, but it's also a machining automation technology. And, um, you know, I have people that literally pull their machining methodologies and just apply it to new geometry. It's almost like they're, they're building features with, with tool paths. All right, so um, that's just what I've seen in Rob 20, 25 years of doing this, not 23 plus. <laughs> but I think Lee has me beat too. So anyway, I just love this. I, I don't think people focus on this enough. I love to focus on this because it's such an amazing technology that not a lot of people know about. Great job, Lee. All right, appreciate it. Yeah, that was good. Thanks, good great fun stuff. Good points about uh, Unite Technology too, Jim. Yeah, so it's not just Creo Geometry. I mean, I have I have companies out there that are just machine shops. They take geometry. In fact, I'm, I was speaking to one this morning. They take stuff in um, designing Creo, uh, uh, SEP files, CATIA. Um, they do everything. They machine very, very large um, 
you know, valves and parts that go on ships for the Navy. Um, but even though the Navy and many of the defense contractors they work with are Creo now, they're standardized in US military standardized on Creo, they have some legacy parts. So it doesn't matter if it was designed 10, 15 years ago, doesn't matter, it doesn't matter what the, the CAD tool was that designed it. They're, they're taking 2D drawings. Lee, you said DXF. They're importing 2D drawings and DXF into Creo, turning those into solid models and then machining them. Yeah, so, um, you know, it, we don't care what your source geometry is, we can machine it. That's, that's the other thing that most people don't realize about Creo. They think, oh, it's great for machining Creo parts. I recently sold this to a machine shop in central Pennsylvania that had two, two old legacy CAD packages and two old CNC packages. Lee, you mentioned these guys had two or three CAM packages. Mm-hmm. So, um, and one I've heard of, the other two I never heard of. But anyway, they hired a guy with a little bit of Creo experience. He in- increased the CNC programming by 300% in the first month. And what they wound up doing is uh, buying another seat for everybody else in the company to use. So that's the kind of productivity they got just by buying Creo. That's it, Rob. Any questions? Nice testimonial. Uh, there are no questions in the queue at this time. Before everyone's dismissed, I uh, just want everybody to know that as, as a uh, reseller, a value-added reseller for for PTC, we want to add value. So one of the things that we do for our customers is we'll give you two hours of desk side coaching um, with your with your purchase of Creo. If you already have Creo, we'll still give you two hours of desk side coaching. Uh, we want to be able to assist you to, to maximize your usage of Creo and its extensions so that you can be a lot more productive and, as Jim would say, make your products faster. Uh, improve the quality of the products and lower your costs while making those products. So if you have any questions, feel free to contact us at info at 3hti.com. I will be sending out a recording of this webinar uh, to everybody or link to a recording uh, probably sometime tomorrow. Um, There's a uh, question, are there other companies or corporations, are there larger companies or corporations that currently use Creo NC? Oh, God, yeah. Uh, ITT, um, Gould's Pump, uh, General Dynamics, uh, Rubbermaid. I sold this to Rubbermaid in 1996. And they make, uh, like, let's say, the lettuce holders, um, uh, you know, that you buy in the store. They're just different sizes. They created one design. Uh, a cap for that design, a mold for each, drawings for all of the above. Then they uh, made electrodes using our tool design application uh, and the molds using tool design. And then they uh, machined the electrodes and did the finishing passes. And then they went into family tables and typed a dip new height and a new width. And all of a sudden they have new tool pass. And then if they wanted for the larger items, they could swap out a larger tool. For roughing and such and facing. So um, th- they were doing a mold a day at Rubbermaid. That was what their CEO said in his address to Wall Street in 1998. Then they took that same technology to make their lawn chairs and their crash cans and all of the things that Rubbermaid, it just blossomed out into everything that they make. That's a great example of a company. Um, using Creo NC and reusing toolpaths and using the automation. Thanks, Jim. Lutron Electronics, there's there's another one. Um, They do all of their prototyping and shop machining using Creo. So if you go in and you buy a dimmer switch, all the prototype molds, all the plastic parts that they they machine, they use uh, Creo um, to machine those. But then everything that they make, all of their, they call it their tool and test group, they, they use uh, Creo to machine those parts and make all of their fixturing and their jigs and their, and their uh, 
pneumatic tools, all that stuff is made in Korea. And then of course, Toyota. So they're huge. Toyota, most people don't know, but Toyota has standardized on Creo um, in design and manufacturing, and they have hundreds of seats of Creo uh, for machining. Go ahead, Rob. Awesome. Thanks, Jim. So, so with that, <laughs> thanks, Jim. So with that, we'll, uh, once again, if you need to contact us, shoot us an email or call us toll free. Uh, I want to thank everybody for being on the webinar today. And also want to thank Jim and Lee for being with us. Uh, Jim, great job, great wrap up. And Lee, excellent job with the demonstration and the review. So hey, I didn't everybody. do everything. We did it all. <laughs> <laughs> thanks again, everyone, and have a great day.